All right, guys, today we're going to be breaking down Patrick Mahomes' deep ball mechanics. Today we're going to be talking about the proper sequencing of this front stride and with your shoulders and with your hips being able to drive this thing. And we're going to be talking about how to throw this ball deep on the run and how you guys can be more consistent with your deeper throws, okay? And, guys, if you're a quarterback and you want to get a stronger arm, you want to improve the distance on your throw, add 10 yards to your deep ball, check out that link in the description that says improve your arm strength in 28 days, a full four-week program to improve your arm strength. Hope to get you guys on that soon. Again, link in the description to check that out. Let's get started. So first things first. First here, and Mahomes makes this throw. Um, I know it's just in warm-ups. It's not a game situation throw, but we're still going to be looking at his mechanics, right? That's the whole situation. That's the whole point of work looking at this situation here, and we're going to be talking about his foot strike. So uh, mainly when you guys are throwing a deep ball, and I want to say this right now, too. Yes, he's got a lot of arm talent because he plays ba- baseball for sure, for sure. But throwing a baseball and throwing a football are two very different things, right? It's not the same sequence. It's not the same stride. It's not the same way you take the football or you take the ball back. It's more similar to hitting a baseball, okay? And that's what we're going to be talking about today but yes 100 percent that plays a factor yes that certainly helps in in certain things like off platform throws mechanics wise but it's more like hitting a baseball so when you hit that front stride in the ground this is perfect because mahomes has that front shoulder closed right and that's how you're able to generate torque because you see when the two things that come into throwing a deep ball and getting power on it are ground force which is this push and you see how much he's pushing off of this front leg or this back leg when you push off of that back leg to get your front foot down that's how we have that proper sequence right that back leg starts to throw it's not a step and then a throw with your shoulders it's a push with your back leg get the front foot down let your hips roll through as you keep your shoulders closed right because you look how it's here a lot of guys they'll have maybe like you hear the common term oh he's over striding right when you over stride that stride will keep going and won't hit the ground until we're about at this open position with my shoulders and that's a mistake i see a lot of younger quarterbacks have is they just open up their shoulders as they're stepping right and they spread their chest as they're stepping that's a complete loss of power right what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to get that front foot down in the grass as your front shoulder stays closed so you can get that hip drive and get that dissociation that everybody likes to talk about, right? And your hips are what brings that football up to that 90-degree angle and that position is zero. And you see how his hips are able to come through before the football. That's how we get torque, especially if we keep that front arm nice and clean. Now, when, we throw in a, when we're throwing a deep ball, right, it's – I. The way I teach it and the way I think it helps register my guys is – for my guys is that the lower half is – um is the same, right? It remains the same on every single throw. You're throwing a slant, throwing a dig, throwing a deep ball. The stride is kind of the same. Obviously, the footwork's different, like the hitch, etc. You're going to be off platform in certain situations, but in terms of stride length, I would say it's about the same, and it's about the same timing. Let's put it that way. It's about the same timing, okay? But what changes is that your front shoulder is arced, because you want to be able to get air on this ball, right? When you're throwing a deep ball, you want to be able to get air so you could get this thing up early. That's why you don't wait on a deep ball so you could get this thing, or you could put this thing with some air so your guy can get underneath it and run it down, right? So that's where that front shoulder arc comes. You don't need to arc it straight up in the air. You don't need to put the ball straight up in the air, right? Now, when he's arcing that front shoulder, being able to get that front stride down, now it uh, just allows his hips to come up and over. You don't want to rotate flat. You don't want to swing your arm out of there because that could let your opposite arm fly, right? So you want to be here. You get that front foot in the ground and you see how his hips are able to rotate up and over. And he's opening up that front hip as well. And you see the whole time he's keeping a nice strong foot strike, nice strong front leg so he doesn't lose any ground force. Because when you extend that front leg and all your weight shoots up, you lose that ground force and you end up pushing the ball up like a shot put almost. We want to be a rotational athlete. And how I do that is I produce ground force by pushing, keep a bend in the front leg i let my hips rip through my hips come through before the football and now to be able to get this thing to go up and over you see how mahomes is flicking his wrist at the top of the throw almost like he's shooting free throws that's the icing on the cake right and you see how how tight he keeps that front arm that's so important um, from a quarterback perspective because what a lot of people do and this is how the baseball throw is different from the football throw a lot of baseball players like to swing that elbow down right they swing that elbow through or whatever and they replace and they finish with their right shoulder on the target left shoulder behind them now when you throw a football you want to really focus on staying square keeping that hand in front of your face and you see how when Mahomes finishes he finishes square to the target hips are square to the target right that's how it kind of differs right foot strikes different and the finish is different right so you can't just use the excuse of oh well he's a baseball player so he could throw farther you can't use that excuse it, it, it doesn't make any sense you, you try to get MLB pitcher to throw a football it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna look like this right he's a quarterback so this is a great job and especially flicking that wrist at the top that helps 
that helps 100% with arc on the ball. That'll help with this thing to get up and over and turn over. If you rotate your hips, a lot of guys struggle to get the nose of the ball to turn over, right? That's something that you see commonly with high school quarterbacks. They throw a good ball, the nose doesn't turn over, right? It doesn't have that pretty kind of drop in the bucket type look. It kind of fades. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, though. Sometimes it fades a little bit too much and we miss a little long or miss a little wide. How we're able to get that is make sure your hips are going up and over. We already kind of talked about that. And then you're flicking that wrist at the top like you're shooting almost a free throw, okay? Great deep ball mechanics here by Mahomes. We're going to take a look in a second. And this is something he's so great at doing is throwing on the run and throwing on the run deep. And that's you see the results with the shot, okay? So now... This is where the baseball background comes in play because when you're throwing and you're throwing like turn and two or something like that or you're making this off-platform throw, you're trying to throw back to first base if you're a shortstop, first baseman, whatever it is, this is where it helps, right? This is where it helps because you're making these off-platform throws on the run. This is where the baseball background helps. I wouldn't say necessarily it helps with arm strength because it's two kind of different things, but th it helps you being more comfortable with these types of throws, but there's still some mechanical elements that tie into this, right? So now, when he throws, you see it's the same principles apply. You want to arc that front shoulder, right? And you want to close those shoulders as you step with the right leg because that's how you get that torque, right? Like I was saying, it's all about timing, right? It's all about the timing of that foot strike, your shoulders, your hips coming through. On the last clip, you saw it was his left foot. When his left foot got down, that front shoulder should remain closed. Now, in this situation, it's his right foot when his right foot hits the ground that front shoulder's got to remain closed because now when he steps right and you see where his toes are going in the direction of the throw right and it's not like he's thinking about all this crap right now when he's in the middle of this play it's just repetition right quarterback is such a repetition position it's such a position where you got to do countless numbers of reps where it's random training and then block training where you're just repping 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 specific things and then you're working random movements like this this is like a random situation so now when we step with the right leg in the direction we're going that gets my hips there, okay? And you want to try to keep your hips there. You see how Mahomes stays pretty much square. He does lean his head out of there. Who could blame him when you're throwing this far downfield on the run? But you see what that kind of does to his follow through a little bit, right? That's why we don't want to lean when we're um, throwing from the pocket. That's what a lot of people struggle with. They lean out with this front side and they let that arm fly and they're not as consistent, right? In this situation, it's kind of tough when you're probably throwing this thing about as far as you can on the run, full speed, not being able to chatter, to not lean out of it and not get your upper half into it a little bit, right? But that's why we don't want to lean when we're from the pocket here but again why he's able to get torque why he's able to get powers when that strikes the ground that front shoulder is closed so now when his left foot can swing through it can serve as like a coil it's like a coil effect to where it snaps you see how it comes through and there's that snap there's that whip to the motion and again what's he doing with that follow through he's flicking that wrist at the top of the throw and he stays relatively square for leaning out of there with his head it, it just kind of affects the arm and pushes that arm outside of his frame but for leaning out of there with his head he stays relatively square to this throw and again that's the torque right he doesn't want to be here and he doesn't want to throw and finish with his hips going towards the sideline and fight the motion you want to step with the right leg get your hips to the target close that shoulder and, and honest to god this is going to help you with easier throws too like a not easier throws but more simpler throws, not as complex throws where you're throwing this like deep route to the back corner of the end zone. More like if you're running, if you're hitting a drag, if you're hitting a dig, right? If you're hitting maybe an outer, a comeback, it helps when you think right leg step, keep your hips there, shoulders close on the right leg step, your left leg swings through and it's like a coil effect, right? And you see how he's able to get this thing through and throw some torque. I'll play at full speed one more time and you see how he's got that snap to the motion. That's what we need. That's how you throw better um, on the run and being able to throw this thing over the top. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching i really appreciate it. again if you guys have any questions leave those in the comments and if you want to get a stronger arm you want to improve your arm strength only 28 days specific exercises to get your arm stronger check out that link in the description and i'll see you guys next time